So in this section we're going to start talking about the history of the Sun right from its birth to its death. So we've spent a lot of time figuring out what is the Sun, how does it work, its size, its properties, what it's made up of, but we need to know where it came from. And where it's going. And where it's going. So let's start right at the beginning, and the beginning is the Big Bang. <laughs> yeah, when we say the beginning, we mean the beginning. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about 13.8 billion years ago. A whole story about why we know that date, I won't <laughs> go into here, but check out the cosmology course for much more information. And after the Big Bang, the universe was very boring. It was full of hot, uniform gas. So we have a hot, not quite a ball, but a hot uh, universe of gas. But it has to change in order for the stars. You don't get hot gas in a star. That's right. Now, if you'd been doing a package tour of the early universe, it would have been very boring because everywhere you go, it would have been hot, uniform gas. And it was all pretty much the same. Oh, over here, there's hot gas. Gosh, over here, there's hot gas. But luckily for us, the gas was not quite the same everywhere. There were some regions which were just a little tiny, about one part in a hundred thousand, denser than other parts. So, so it wasn't perfectly uniform. It was almost uniform, but just slightly off. And because it wasn't uniform, allowed it to not be boring? That's right. Now, we don't know why it was slightly lumpy. It's probably something to do with quantum mechanical fluctuations of the early universe. Again, see the cosmology course for much more detail. But we're very lucky that it was. So let's say the region over here is just that little bit denser than the region over here. Yep. Then, if you're a bit of gas in the middle, which way are you going to go? Well, you're going to go towards the denser part. Because it's going to have more gravity to pull you in. That's right. So what happens is this matter falls into the denser regions. But now you have an even denser region. So it pulls stuff in even faster. And denser. So faster. Fa and denser. And, and faster. denser. And denser. So okay, so let's actually see this. Um, so you can see what's happening here is the stuff is falling down into these denser regions. So as we get to these denser regions, we get this buildup, which is building more, which is building more, which is building more. And it's all because this one part in 100 million d denser areas allowed it just one or few two specks to just pull a little bit more, creating essentially a chain reaction. Yeah, it's called gravitational instability. And here's another simulation of it. So we can see, uh, this is a more recent computer, supercomputer simulation, yep. and you can see that slowly the gas starts to accumulate into lumps. And these lumps are actually going, what are going to be turning into galaxies. So, so these clumps start to form more mass, and it's in these pockets that then evolution takes place to form galaxies. That's right. And you can see this beautiful pattern of all the swirling stuff in the denser regions. Um, what sometimes happens is once you start getting that gas really dense, it forms some stars, and some of these stars explode, yep. the supernovae, and blow the gas back out again. Another thing is you sometimes form massive black holes, and as the gas swirls around, this is my field of research, quasars, as the gas swirls around these, it squirts out jets of material, um, which you can see some of these jets coming out. So even though you have these huge clumps, you still have a little bit of substructure. There's a little bit of activity that is kind of churning up the area as it goes. Yes, but now let's um, look at a more detailed simulation of one particular one of these things. We're now going to look at the formation of one galaxy. So we're going to kind of zoom in on one of those clumps? That's right. So here we'll see the evolution of this. This is a dense region. You see the gas falling in towards it. And you, and it, but it's also falling into patterns, right? It's not just kind of bucketing on. There's these lines, there are these webs, as we call it, falling into this Yes, clump. filaments of cold gas being funneled in. There's shock heating. There's, again, my field of expertise, and there's an enormous complexity of the whole thing. But at the end, you see what's forming here is actually forming a spinning disk of gas. That's right. What's happening is as the big cloud of gas shrank, it got pulled on by other blobs of gas nearby, and that caused it to spin slightly. And whenever something's spinning and it gets smaller, it spins faster. I don't know if I could demonstrate that by spinning around. If I bring my arms in, I go faster. I'm sure you've played on spinning chairs in offices. That's right. For times. all of you who are watching this at work and spinning around, you can do this experiment for science. That's right. And so you end up with something like this, a disk or spiral galaxy, which is like our own Milky Way. And so you're saying this original rotation, and we know our Milky Way, and we know pretty much every other galaxy is rotating, came from this initial instability at the beginning. Yes. So this huge kind of gas collapsed because of the slight fluctuations, formed a spinning disk of gas, which then turned into stars. Here's actually a fly-through of the Milky Way. Um, 
just to remind you of what this whole thing is like. Um, so what we're doing here is we're flying through this disk of stars. Get the idea, it's basically a very thin layer. It's about the same as a gramophone record, if you're old enough to remember those things. <laughs> um, so it's uh, 50, 60,000 light years across, but only a, a few hundred light years thick. That's right. And so we've now flown into that disk, and the disk is where most of the stars and the gas is located. That's right. 